Hi, my name's Mark, uh, and uh, today I'm going to tell you a bit about SciSpacey, which is our packet, uh, Spacey package uh, for biomedical text. And this is a uh, joint work that I've done at the Allen Institute with um, Daniel, Iz, and Willie, who um, you'll kind of learn a little bit more about in the future. So, um, first, a little bit about me. Uh, I do research and engineering at AI2, a kind of mix of both. Um, my main job, apart from uh, building cool spacey tools, is uh, a library called Allen NLP, which is uh, more research orientated. And I've been involved in research into kind of representation learning, uh, embeddings from language models. Uh, and more broadly, I'm interested in biomedical NLP and software people actually uh, use in the real world, not just uh, kind of big vectors of, of words. Uh, <laughs> uh, so. The first thing I'm going to talk a bit about is like why bio, like why is it interesting? Why should you work on it? Um, and so one of the main motivating factors for uh, us building SciSpacey was that at the Allen Institute, we have this uh, product called Semantic Scholar. And it's essentially an academic search engine. Um, and as you are probably well aware, a lot of academic literature is in the biomedical and uh, medical domains. So I think Semantic Scholar has something like 56 million PDFs that you can search for. And a big part of a great search, search experience in those papers is um, being able to do information extraction. Uh, so recognizing entities, uh, doing entity linking, like Sophie was just talking about. Um, but here, uh, it's a, the domain makes this a little tricky. Um, and, th and then also more broadly, just. Uh, people who work on biomedical NLP typically are actually not interested in NLP. They're interested in something much cooler, which is doing stuff like um, finding adverse drug reactions on Twitter or uh, finding mechanisms which drive cancer from, uh, from uh, biomedical papers. So typically, like, helping pe biomedical researchers do their jobs is satisfying because they're actually doing cooler stuff than what I work on. Um, <laughs> or at least that's kind of like how I, f uh, I feel about it. And if I can help them do their job better, um, then, you know, that makes me happy. Uh, so as y lots of people in this room have probably uh, done, they've come to a new project. This first thing you go to is kind of spacey, pick it up, because it's fast, it's uh, robust in lots of ways. And you start trying to parse some, some text. So here we've got a doc. Uh, this is just a random sentence I pulled out of a biomedical paper. And um, first thing, just look at some sentences. And I'm thinking, hmm, OK, this is four sentences. OK, maybe this is just some weird thing with plus or minus. Spacey can't do plus or minus. Uh, so, OK, fine. So now we start looking at things like this, this sentence, activations of estrogen receptors, ER beta at AP1 sites. I don't know what this means. I do, however, know that ER beta is not a verb. Um, so now it's like, mm, okay, maybe, maybe the problem is actually a bit more serious. And then, even more fundamentally, if we're doing name density recognition on a biomedical paper, um, like, it's just completely the wrong domain, right? Uh, I mean, the parsing is like an out of domain problem, but here it's just like the labels don't make any sense. Um, so, so, yeah, that's kind of the motivation for. for for why we want to extract something like this instead. So uh, different, different entities, uh, more entities. Um, and this is the sort of thing you can extract with, uh, with SciSpace. Um, and this is the kind of performance drop that you actually see when you use, uh, when you use Spacey's uh, web media model on uh, some biomedical data, and I know Matt and Inez are sitting in the back going like, Mark, we're, oh, I thought you were going to talk about like cool things about Spacey, not like, like <laughs> <laughs> when you try and apply it to data, it's like, oh, it doesn't, <laughs> doesn't quite work. But um, So we were kind of setting out to fix this. And the great thing about biomedical NLP is that um, there's actually lots of resources. So uh, that's, that's obviously a problem, the kind of previous slides that I just showed you, but there's actually lots of things we can do to fix it. So. Uh, one big thing people in biomedical NLP like doing is uh, making big ontologies and databases of lists of things, uh, which is very helpful for people like me who uh, try to build things from them. Um, and particularly, annotated data also is uh, quite abundant. So 
And it just happens that these things are almost exactly what we need to uh, build a full spacing pipeline. So men mentions uh, contains lots of entities that we can use labeled entities. Uh, the genia and craft corp corpora uh, have pod tag dependencies, and then you know just the raw PubMed corpus. Uh, we can we can learn vectors from that, and uh, you know frequency statistics and things other things you need in in a spacing pipeline. Uh, so just a bit of info about the core pipeline. Uh, it has <coughs> all the things that the existing spacey pipeline has, so pause tagging, a dependency parser. Um, the dependencies are universal dependencies, it's just a bit more modern. Uh, um, it's also got a generic mention detector, so uh, this is useful for when you want to uh, do entity linking, but without actually specific entity types. And then we've also got some specialist NER models, which uh, are for a particular subfield. So uh, we have one for like cancer genomics and things that identify specific drugs, specific diseases. Um, so yay, we're kind of back up to uh, uh, accuracies that you're expecting uh, from, from a spacey pipeline, um, which is great. Um, so now, oh, and then one final point is that um, it's quite easy when you create these kind of pipelines to go too far the wrong way. So if you just train a biomedical parser, it's actually not very good at parsing web text, which is kind of annoying because um, quite often you're going to encounter web text when you're doing biomedical uh, text processing, like for instance in the, you know, people trying to find adverse drug reactions on Twitter, quite a lot of that content is going to be uh, actually more general domain. And um, it turns out here that doing the most simple thing you could do uh, works and uh, we don't need to do anything else, uh, which is just mix in some of the old data. Uh, your performance on uh, the blue bars comes back up to where it should be, and the green bars, which is the biomedical performance, stays where it was before. So uh, there's lots of research you can do on doing this sort of thing automatically with no data, but uh, you could also just like mix in some data and it works fine, uh, which is kind of helpful. Um, and then more, so that's kind of the full pipeline. Uh, and then I just want to talk a bit about why, why another tool, because there, there are existing tools um, that you can use to do this type of thing. There's a couple of really big problems with them, though. The key one is Metamap. Uh, and there's some great things about Metamap. It uh, has lots of features, uh, has very thorough coverage, but it's also completely lexicalized, which means that um, essentially, for all of the tasks that it does, it, it has large dictionaries of, of lookups, essentially. And particularly for entity linking, it makes it very slow because it generates many um, morphological variants of a single word, which it then tries to match to a large, a really, really big uh, dictionary of entities. Uh, it, it's really, really slow. It's also in Java, uh, which makes it kind of hard to hack on, essentially. And when I was developing uh, SiteSpacey, I got this quote from, from someone that um, um, works on, <laughs> on the biomedical text uh, at, fr from a more biomedical side of things. Um, bio <laughs> Metamap light, of course, is as slow as molasses. I'm currently running it on six cores across Medline, and it'll take almost a month to complete. Um, and I kind of want people in this room to like, reject this as like, something that's acceptable, because it's not just the time that it takes to run, which is a month, which is maybe fine if you run it once a year. But also, it's just like, if something like this takes a month to run, and, it, and one of your like, machines goes down, and you have to run, start it again, it just means that you're taking so much time um, making your systems like, robust and doing infrastructure work, instead of working on like, what you are actually meant to be working on. Um, and just in terms of like quick like back of the envelope calculation, side space is about 30 times faster than Metamap. Like, so um, in my mind, that's that's quite a it's quite a pleasing speed up. And of course, there's there's sl slightly unfair in the sense that Metamap like does have some features that side space doesn't have yet. But um, you know, in the past three months, we are slowly taking entity linking into this uh, middle set, and uh, I've been doing some initial work on negation detection as well. So hopefully these circles are going to merge over time and without going back to kind of month-long processing times. Um, 
yeah, so that's the, that's the core, core pipeline. But then the real opportunity with custom spacey packages is custom components that like really fit your domain. So I'm going to talk a bit about two um, custom components that we've written, which are very helpful for biomedical techs, along with just some like kind of general uh, musings that I've been having over the past few months about uh, doing NLP. Um, so, and the first one is that machine learning isn't always the answer, um, <laughs> which is kind of an <laughs> some people in this room are going, oh, damn, I wish it was always the answer because <laughs> it's kind of fun. But <laughs> um, uh, this is Marty Hurst, and she's a, I'm sure many people in the room know who she is, but if you don't, she's a professor at Berkeley, and she's kind of a boss. Like, um, she does a really great like NLP work and also hum human computer interaction. You probably you've probably heard of Hurst patterns, which are typically used to um, generate uh, ontologies of like hyponym relationships. So like uh, uh, a cow is an animal. But she's also done some work um, which we've built into a component in SciSpacey. And this is called a simple algorithm for identifying abbreviation definitions in biomedical text. Uh, so one thing in, in papers is quite often you get uh, a long form in the abstract followed by an abbreviation which is then used all the way through the rest of the, the uh, paper. It would be really great to be able to just uh, associate the, those abbreviations with that long form all the way through. Uh, it turns out there's a really simple way to do this. You find things in brackets, you look behind the brackets for 10 words, and then you greedily choose a definition which contains the abbreviation characters in the right order, so like P, L, 3, K and has the first word of the full definition beginning with the same character that the abbreviation does. Um, so, you know, there's no machine learning there, definitely. Um, and that gives you 95% precision and 82% recall, which in my mind is, uh, is pretty good. Um, this is a completely unsupervised, which means that um, it's completely domain agnostic. So if you want to identify abbreviations in, uh, I don't know, your construction company. You could use this very easily. Um, and it's also uh, custom components allow you to take advantage of the really uh, straightforward spacey API. So you can see here, uh, we just added a pipe here, and then uh, we've parsed some text with some abbreviations in, and we can see these spans that um, relate to these other spans in the, in the doc. Um, the other one that Sophie's already talked a bit about uh, is entity linking and candidate generation. Uh, we take a bit of a different approach in SciSpacey, partly because I didn't actually know that Sophie was uh, going to be working on this until until uh, until I'd started it. So we kind of <laughs> had already <laughs> already started a little bit, um, and it really comes down to the key problem that we can't run um, a full model on every possible like concept and mention pair that we find. Because in UMLS, which is a popular uh, biomedical knowledge base, there's 2.7 million uh, concepts. It's just impractical. So the way we've gone about this, again, it, this does use some machine learning, but it's, very, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, we basically uh, use a TF-IDF vectorizer from sklearn, and we create a big sparse vector of uh, n-grams of, of entities. In, in UMLS, and we make a large uh, approximate nearest neighbors uh, index, essentially. And then at prediction time, we receive a mention that um, our mention detector is found. We vectorize it, and then we find a list of nearest neighbors just by this uh, character n-gram sim similarity. And this gives you a rank ranked concept uh, list of kind of concept candidates. And like, there's no model really involved here. It's like very straightforward, but actually in practice it works very well. So <coughs> um, just using 10 nearest neighbors lookups for, for a given uh, mention, on med mentions this gives you 80% recall, which just means that um, the, gold, the gold concept is in the top 10 80% of the time. Um, the other thing about this number is that um, I'm, I really want to encourage people here to actually look at the output that your model um, is showing you, because the recall at 10 for that is 80, but the recall at 1 is 60 or something. But 
UMLS is a noisy knowledge base. So um, these, here are the top five uh, candidates for, for this uh, mentioned endothelial cells. It's kind of hard to argue that uh, some of these concepts aren't related. So um, I'd encourage you to uh, actually look when you do this type of work um, and see, like, OK, this is, this, these other things are not exactly right, but I'm sure they're helpful in someone who is uh, you know, uh, developing a search interface or uh, developing some other actual product that builds on top of entity linking. Um, another nice thing about components is that they can play well together, right? So this is the, uh, the recall where k is the number of nearest neighbors queries we take. And you can see it kind of tails off. Um, and then if you look at the, the mentions for which we can't find candidates, uh, those are typically abbreviations. Um, because uh, character engrams don't really play very well if you're doing similarity in a space where you have like, you know, three characters. It's going to be very low. But now we've already built an abbreviation detector, so we can use that from earlier to just replace those, those um, abbreviations with their full form before we do the, before we do the um, queries, which gives you this nice kind of 3 or 4% boost. So this is just an example of uh, finding an error in your system and then just correcting it using a very simple heuristic method, essentially. Um, and then finally, uh, if you're interested in making Spacey for another domain, um, you essentially need these uh, four things. A data set with pos tags. Pos is optional. Um, I know you have will, will disagree that pos is optional, but uh, I think for, for the general use case, you can, you can get by without them. Some NER data, because I think NER is really like the killer application for, for many of us in the room. And, and then uh, lots of raw text so you can learn vectors and frequency statistics. But then also, you can really kind of uh, double down on these types of pipelines by designing specific components, which might not necessarily have anything to do with machine learning, um, um, to, to just augment the, the, the pipeline itself. I'm sure there's many of you in this room that can think of uh, business-specific pipeline components that would make uh, would make your job a lot easier. Uh, and then also, finally, the, like, components are really easy to write. This is like a component. It just takes a doc and it returns a doc. It doesn't do anything, but you can, you can um, quite easily make it do things. <coughs> uh, so just some takeaways. Like, iteration speed is more valuable than you think. Um, sometimes machine learning isn't the answer, and sometimes like string heuristics and good APIs are the answer. <laughs> um, Domain differences matter in NLP, and then also hacking on Spacey is uh, not hard. I mean, uh, this site Spacey origin originally came from a hackathon project um, at AI2, and uh, now it's kind of developed into a thing uh, uh, people are actually using. So it's um, definitely within the realms of possibility that uh, you could build a similar, similar pipeline system like this. Um, yeah, so thanks. Um, Here's how you can install SciSpacey, and uh, it's all open source. Um, and we have a small website with some models you can download. Uh, yeah, so thanks. <laughs>